Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of July 21st, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. The week does start with a sense of awareness of some emotional entanglements that may be there, but it moves in a very inspiring direction. Thanks to a rare and beautiful and fiery and passionate alignment between Mars and Jupiter that could literally feel like it has restored us to enthusiasm for our future and seeing our present with greater gratitude as well. So there is a lot to talk about here because we do have this gamut of emotions playing out this week. We're able to take a step back and see things from a more elevated and even intellectual perspective while it is that we are experiencing some very strong emotion. And I think that's actually part of the blessing this week. Part of the blessing is that we are willing and actually pursuing in some cases to feeling things deeply, to understanding our truest desires and wanting to align what it is that we want with a higher integrity at the same time being able to observe ourselves having a reaction, but then knowing that we are able to learn from this moment to elevate ourselves and our lives and to change, to transform ourselves is part of any spiritual journey. And it'll be this week that these various parts of the spiritual journey are gonna be highlighted in powerful ways. So let's start with what is intense because that's actually energy that we are feeling as we start this week slowly but surely we'll move in a more elevated direction as i'm calling it but at least at the very beginning of the week the dominant energy is the fact that venus is standing across the sky from pluto venus right now is moving through the sign of cancer she's already quite emotional here uh, in a good sense of course our emotions can be beautiful but it is that opposition to pluto that is adding intensity and even an element of complication. With Pluto, there tends to be some feeling of fate. Now, whether or not there is fate, there is karma playing out, that tends to be the nodes that tell us that. But with this particular connection, there is a feeling of being pulled in a particular direction almost by the will of fate. But where it is that we are being pulled towards can be an area or a person or a situation that we recognize is complicated and we wonder if it is even worth it to pursue. Where Venus is now, we've got a Mercury retrograde there and under the same sky, that Mercury retrograde is going to connect with the sun. Now, this is a very interesting counterbalance because on the one hand, we have energy that is so feeling oriented and it's in a very feeling oriented sign at that. But then Mercury and the Sun, by their own nature, are energies that are not necessarily driven by feeling. They are understood as speaking to a heightened sense of awareness, a, a healthy detachment, being able to see what is going on, being able to intellectualize what is happening, and being able to use the gift of our rationality in order to elevate what it is that could be felt deeply within what is hard to put into words, it is under this energy that we may find just the words we need to transform our perspective around a particular moment. Now it is this connection between Venus and Pluto that's interesting for another reason as well. For some people, and I don't think this will be the case for most, but this energy can be somewhat obsessive. It can feel a little bit consuming. It can be manipulative as well. And sometimes with this energy, there can be some feelings of betrayal. Now that may not actually be the case, right? Because this energy is so provoking, it is about pushing buttons and reaching something deeper. What can happen in life very often, I actually think, is that we will have an experience. Let's say someone says something 
to 10 different people. Those 10 different people are going to have very different reactions to what it is that is said. Anything that's said to you, any information that you interact with, it is an interaction. And it is that you are bringing all of you, all of your experiences and how it is that you interpreted them to that moment of interpretation. And that is why you can have a reaction to a moment. And sometimes that reaction is, well, for lack of a better word, justified, right? It makes sense given the context. But we often see the case where a person will have a reaction that is not proportional to what it is that might be transpiring now. But then who judges it as proportional or not? That is also very subjective as well. And so Pluto and Venus, these are not energies that are rational at all. They are highly subjective, highly emotive. Uh, they are energies of submersion within what it is that is happening on an emotional level, on a desire level. And again, this can be desire in every area of life. But it is Mercury and the Sun that are going to act as a gift. They're going to invite us to look more closely at what it is that is really going on, to look at it rationally rather than react, rather than feel like buttons are, are pressed and that's it. All of this comes forward, all of this sense of our own vulnerabilities and our hurts and all the things that happened to us before, encapsulated by a moment. Instead, we're able to see it for what it is, being in this moment. Now, I actually also think that as much work as you have done to put the past behind you, to heal whatever it is, you want to heal the wounds, you want to understand the past, um, wherever it is that you have done the work, that work will always stay with you. And ultimately we do that work so that we can live more fully in the present so that we can, instead of continuing to react to the world, we truly come into ourselves beyond the pain, beyond the previous experience. We're able to actually live in this moment enough to take the moment for what it is and not go beyond that, not necessarily just be reacting for its own sake but rather to take a moment and know that we no longer need to react. We can let someone else's stuff be their stuff without taking it on. I think that is part of the great gift of the work that we do to evolve ourselves. And when people talk about evolution, what I understand that is, it is the move towards greater love and greater wisdom. When we evolve, we own the energy within ourselves that is love, that is wisdom. We allow it to embody more of ourselves and more of our lives more fully. That is what it means to grow. That is what it means to actually evolve in a direction of love. It is to become more loving more often. We're never going to be perfect, okay? We are human beings. If it was that we already had all that awareness, all that wholeness there, I truly believe we would just ascend to the next level. Whatever it is that's next, once we reach Nirvana, as the Buddhists call it, we reach that space of knowing ourselves as fully love and fully wisdom and embodying it fully, then we no longer need what's called the earth school, as Gary Yusukov called it. Um, we no longer need to be here. We go on to the next series of lessons, wherever that may be, whether you want to call it another spiritual plane, another planet, we move on to the next series of spaces that are going to allow us to evolve more and more, uh, to reach higher and higher levels of spiritual truth, of spiritual love, of spiritual wisdom. But if you're here and you're human, you are trudging the messy road of happy destiny right along everybody else, okay, no matter who you are. Uh, you are doing this work right along with everyone. And so we have these moments with Venus standing across the sky from Pluto. And this may very well show some of us, perhaps by surprise, where our work is, what it is that we are feeling in a given moment. And instead of bypassing it, right, instead of saying, oh, no, well, I did that work and I shouldn't be feeling this way, 
there's this balance between allowing yourself to feel it, acknowledging that you feel it, but then understanding it because it is in that understanding that we transform. We become that energy of love and wisdom just a little bit more for today. Now, if it is that we are willing to do that work, if it is that we are willing to elevate the energy, it is once we get later into the week, right around Thursday, that Mercury will meet Venus in the sky. And this is a sense of some reward. Now, there's other really big reward energy happening at that time that I'll talk about in a moment. But as far as Venusian energy goes, mercurial energy goes, this should be some good news taking place that allows us to know that the work that we did or the moment of honesty that we had with ourselves, the ownership that we took over what we feel, that ultimately lends itself to not only clarity, but very likely some positive developments as well. Now, sometimes it really is that someone else is purposefully being manipulative, right? It's good to be able to see it for what it is. And then part of the elevation could be, wow, this person is manipulative. I don't need to do this anymore. That is a huge step towards greater love and greater wisdom. But remember, Mercury is retrograde. And what that tells me is, what might look a certain way now will look very different once we get into next week. Mercury goes direct. It's going to be a light bulb moment. And what this week felt like it was so entangled, so complicated, or even what felt so obvious, it could totally flip once we get next week. Once we get to next week, it could be like what was clear. Now you realize that there are subtleties. What it was that was so confusing it's like the truth becomes so obvious that you can't believe you didn't see it before. Now, regardless of where it is that your journey takes you, know that this is a journey. And this moment is an important part of the learning that's going to take you to whatever understanding it is that you need. And wherever it is that this Mercury retrograde has been helping you to be more introspective, to understand what's really going on a little bit more deeply, and to consider your own perceptions and how it is that they can color what might actually be transpiring. Well, it is once we get to Mercury Direct that we'll be able to start to understand, to integrate our lessons that much more deeply. Elsewhere in the sky, right around Tuesday is when the sun will move into the sign of Leo. Happy birthday to all the Leos out there. We will welcome in Leo season. Now, it is this energy that has been thought of as leisurely, but also passionate and heart-oriented. This energy has to do with children or being a big kid ourselves, and it has to do with allowing our creativity to come forward and also reaping rewards from that. Games of chance and gambles of all kinds are understood as connected to a Leo energy. And I think that's because this is an energy that has to do with confidence. It has to do with self-trust. It has to do with knowing that there is something within you that is worthy of shining and being seen. And in at least one area of life, all of us are going to be asked to own our brilliance, to own our light and to let it shine forward. But on a whole other level, Leo season tends to be really nice for just enjoying your life and having parties and being fabulous all around. So that's something that we have to look forward to. But it is this very Leo energy that is going to be jacked up, that is going to hit a high, beautiful note as we navigate towards Thursday. It is going to be Thursday that we are going to have a rare and supremely harmonious alignment between Mars and Jupiter. Mars right now is in the sign of Leo. Jupiter right now is moving through its home sign of Sagittarius. So we've got a strong Jupiter there. This connection uh, being supremely harmonious, well, it happens about once a year. But for these planets to be in these signs while it happens is much more rare. And so in at least one area of life, we are about to feel very energized. That's the Mars receiving that uh, Jupiterian energy. 
But this can also be very optimistic, very hopeful. And it is the sense of a future that we can move towards, that we feel ourselves taking action towards, that can create very powerful momentum now, that can spur us forward towards where it is that we can see, that we can sense we could become happier. That is part of the gift at this time. It is ultimately about owning ourselves, owning our happiness, knowing what we want in our heart of hearts, knowing what it is that lights us up, and knowing that if we trust it, we can empower ourselves and ultimately move ourselves towards more, more opportunity, more possibility. Perhaps we may even gain a glimpse into what is bigger than anything that we thought was even possible for ourselves before, but now it looks totally achievable. It looks totally tangible. Like we, yeah, I could do this. I could take this action and, and why not? The whole world could open up to me. With energy like this, with confidence like this, yes, it very well can. And so for all of us, yeah, in at least one area of life, we're feeling really empowered and really excited about where it is that we could take things. It is a trine. The type of conversation here is what astrologers call a trine, which means that good stuff just sort of shows up for us. That's part of the blessing of the trine. It's two energies working easily and seamlessly together, able to magnify each other's energies, able to bring blessings towards us and into our lives. And wherever it is that you're hoping for the blessing of empowerment, wherever it is that you're hoping for the blessing of optimism, well, this energy is going to be extremely helpful in that. This can be energy where on a collective level, we may hear of some really fabulous celebrity news. We may hear of uh, some really fabulous lottery wins as well. Uh, these are the types of things that people like to talk about when we have this type of energy playing out. Uh, so whether it is like a huge jackpot being won uh, or whether it is just seeing someone fully own their power, fully own their light and enjoy it completely, having that be the inspiration, well, chances are this week that'll get our collective attention. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it's got to be that beautiful Mars and Jupiterian energy we want to be a little careful with this. It can be really confident, like way overconfident. Um, but I think that a little confidence, well, a little confidence and a little overconfidence doesn't really hurt, especially if the case is that you don't normally feel that way. But this is also an energy that says bravery is rewarded being courageous about what it is that you truly desire, what it is that you truly believe is going to move you towards greater happiness and taking a risk on behalf of it is going to help you to draw it that much closer to you. Now you may want to have another look at the Jupiter special horoscope because it was in that horoscope where I talk about where it is that Jupiter is blessing your life this year. Well, that Mars is going to give so much power, so much purpose, and it's really going to give us a boost of motivation to take action, to maximize those blessings. We've got a few months left in this. It is going to be in December, early December that Jupiter will change signs not to move back here into the sign of Sagittarius for a good 12 years. It's about once every 12 years that Jupiter will move through this part of the sky. And that means that we have moments like this, moments where we can really tap into the possibilities, the potential, and the big blessings that Jupiter is promising. It is moments like this that, yes, ask us to check in. That's the Mercury retrograde taking place. We're checking in with ourselves. We're making sure that we really do want what it is that we are moving towards. The great thing is though, once we have that certainty or even just a little bit of guts, a little bit of bravery, well, chances are we're going to find ourselves being able to accelerate our pathway towards maximizing truly beautiful developments in our lives now. Well, thank you so much for watching. What are you excited about this week? What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week, 
speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Synchronicity University is fully underway. Thank you so much to all the amazing students who've been joining us live. Thank you to all the students who are joining us on the replay. Um, it's been so much fun so far. We're halfway through. A lot of fun learning along with you. Earlier today, we had the lesson in the part of fortune, happiness and success. Uh, and that was focused all on the part of fortune. I went through every sign in every house, plus planets, an uh, aspect to the part of fortune in the chart. Uh, and so that was a very rewarding experience to have with you. Thank you. Next week, we'll be looking at the midheaven. And again, I'll be going through each and every sign of the midheaven, planets aspecting the midheaven. Uh, it's going to be a jam-packed class. Once again, we're going to have a lot of fun. If you haven't signed up for summer school yet, no worries. You can do that now. You'll get an instant download to the classes that have already been and you'll be able to get the links to join us live in the classes that are going on. We've got a dedicated Facebook group that is only for people who are registered for the summer school. That Facebook group also live streams, like I simulcast uh, the classes on Zoom. I simulcast them to the Facebook group so that while you're waiting for your download, you can be sure to watch it. If you have a quick question right after the class, you can be sure to refer to the class right away so you don't have to wait to watch the replay. You can get it ASAP, get it immediately. So that has also been a lot of fun interacting with you guys on Facebook as well. And yes, we got more classes coming up. The Midheaven next week. After that, it'll be an introduction to astrological magic. And then we're going to have our Q&A where you get to ask all your follow-up questions. We'll be hanging out together for two hours. That I'm really looking forward to as well. And of course, if you are currently a student or you've been a student, or maybe there's something you really want to learn astrologically, you'd like me to teach a class on it, please do use the contact form on my website. Let me know. I absolutely have been loving growing and expanding uh, Synchronicity University. And so I'm looking forward already. I'm like, I can't wait for the next session. I think that's going to be so cool. So I look forward to hearing from you with your suggestions for future classes. And of course, I have in-person events coming up that I'm really, really excited about. Labor Day weekend, I will be in Baltimore. And then in January, in 2020, I mean, my calendar is already starting to fill up for 2020 right now as we speak. In January, I will be part of a truly rare cruise event with other world-class astrologers. I'll be one of the speakers. I'll be participating with all of you as well. We will all be together out of our comfort zones, participating in this collective experience, this shared experience together. I think it is going to be so rewarding. And I'm sure that those who are karmically called to be there uh, will be. And I'm sure that the group will be absolutely perfect uh, for what it needs to be. So you can learn more about this at the links below. Uh, and already I got some events coming up in, uh, in 2020. So in May, well, actually even before then, I, it is Mercury retrograde. So maybe I shouldn't share too much about the brand new stuff, but I know I've told you guys before that in May, I will be in Toronto. Now, speaking of that, I did want to mention that I am actually going to be in Toronto the week of August 16. I'm taking a class. Uh, I'm very, very excited about it. Uh, it's sort of like a, a Chinese astrology, a rare kind of other type of astrology that I'm really, really, really excited to learn. And so, you know, I, I made a payment plan. I made all my payments. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a student. I am going to know what it is, what I used to do way back, what I see other people doing when they come to my workshops and my classes. I am going to fully be a student learning something brand new. Uh, and so I'm really excited about that, but that means I'm going to be in downtown Toronto in the Yorkville area the week of August 16. If you would like a consultation, I might be able to fit in one or two people in the evening. So if it is that you'd like a consultation, please do use the contact form on my website 
and we can meet in person in downtown Toronto to make that happen. I may have time for one or two consultations in Baltimore as well. If it is that you're interested in an in-person consultation in Baltimore while I am there, uh, please do again, use the contact form on my website and we can take it from there. And thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for this moment with you. Uh, I always feel like when we're like stopping the video, when it's starting to wrap up, it always feels like I wish I could give everyone a big hug and I am sending you a virtual hug. I'm sorry that I haven't been able to do the uh, live premiere lately, uh, but I will try to get back to that as soon as possible. This Mercury retrograde uh, has been quite something. But I'm really looking forward to things changing very quickly. I think that that Mars and Jupiter energy is really going to help things to change quite a bit and soon and quickly. So I'm looking forward to that burst of happiness and excitement that is coming up. And I hope that wherever it is that you are hoping for happiness to come rushing into your life, that it does just that, thanks to the blessing that is being indicated here. Well, thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.